Hi everyone, Marcus again, and I have something that's really important. I've been getting emails forever about the alkaline water, and it's so important. Everybody thinks alkaline, 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 and I gotta say, I got caught up in this whole thing years ago, like six, seven years ago. I wrote about it in my book. I got, I six, the only thing I ever regret writing in my book was about alkaline and alkaline water. I, we learn our lessons the hard way, and it's all about growing and, and learning more. So I brought a scientific expert with me today who's going to help clear up a lot of these questions uh, about the, 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 uh, the matter. Now, those of you who have a Kangen machine, I'm not saying to throw it out because it definitely has its purpose, but it's not for what you think. It's actually the opposite of what you think. It's actually the acid water that you want. And I'm not talking about drinking it, but we'll get into that in a minute. So before you start coming after me, know what, there's a place for everything, but it's the whole alkaline water thing is, it's it, it's it, it, it's it's a joke. It's a myth. It's ridiculous, and I, I don't I want I want people to really know what's going on. So with me today I have James Sloan. He's the same guy that was in my free food and medicine thing on wild plants. He's an expert. He was in the medical field for. 13 years. 13 years, and he gave up his license because he just got fed up with, and he'll explain this in a minute, and he became an expert on herbs and healing yourself naturally, and uh, if anybody can explain anything scientifically, medically, and in a very intelligent sounding way, he's the guy. So here we are today. Thanks for coming, James. Finally, we get to have this important talk. <laughs> so uh, go for it. Start, start the process with the alkaline thing. You know, basically, what people need to understand is that the body has various pHs. There's not a singular pH in the body. There's parts of the body that have to be acidic. Stomach, for example, the skin is actually slightly acidic. If the skin becomes too alkaline, it actually becomes damaged. There's parts of the intestine that are slightly acidic. And one of the roles of the acids in the body is to control pathogens. Because one of the big myths we hear a lot is that the alkalinity kills pathogens, acidity promotes right, it. Right. And it's actually just the, the opposite. opposite. You know, like our skin, we have flora on our skin that generate acids, those acids actually help to kill the flora. When we ingest uh, bacteria in our food, stomach acid kills the pathogens right, and right. so on and so forth. A good example of that is you can look at wild dogs. Now, they can eat meat that's been rotting out there for two, three weeks and they don't get sick despite all the bacteria. Dogs produce stomach acid, I think it's something like 10 times higher than humans yeah, do. Right, right. And it's that acid that kills the pathogens. Another great example uh, is candida. Candida actually thrives in an alkaline environment. And this is really, really simple to prove too. Because when women take uh, antibiotic, they end up with yeast infections. The reason for that is the uh, antibiotics kill off the flora that generate the acids that control the candida. Right. In an acidic environment, the candida growth gene is actually turned off and is kept in its benign, uh, it's basically it's a yeast form because it's a dimorphic uh, microbe. It exists as a yeast and exists as a fungus. When the um, the environment becomes too alkaline, such as when we take antibiotics, you kill off the flora, the pH actually rises, that turns on the candida growth gene and it also turns it into its hyphal form or fungal form where the hyphae and the fungus actually allow it to dig into the tissues and cause tissue damage. Another big myth that I always hear, and I, I, in fact I just read this recently, is I keep hearing cancer cannot survive in an yeah, alkaline, alkaline environment. environment. Yeah, yeah. Total bogus. No, it's not even true at all. In fact, the internal pH of a cancer cell is more alkaline than a healthy cell. You can look up the studies on Medline, but I'll sit there and show the internal pH is more alkaline. And the reason for that is that the cancer cells do not generate lactic acid like is commonly told. They actually generate lactate, which is non-acidic. The acidity comes from the hydrogen protons, and the cancer cells cannot tolerate the acidity, so they export those hydrogen protons to the external matrix, and that's what causes the acidity. So they're actually getting rid of the acidity to protect themselves. It's that alkalinity that allows them to survive and thrive. If people really want to alkalize, all they really have to do is hyperventilate and that will cause them to go very alkaline very quick because you're blowing off so much carbon dioxide that it actually will raise your pH. And what happens when you hyperventilate, you end up passing out. Well, the reason for that is that you need the carbon dioxide, or carbonic acid technically, in order to maintain the blood vessels in an open state. When you go too alkaline, it actually constricts the blood vessels, causing a decrease of blood flow going to the brain, so you end up 
up passing out. And when you pass out, you actually, your respiration will either slow down or stop temporarily. And what that does, it builds back up the carbonic acid to dilate the blood vessels, restore blood flow back to the brain. So really the best way to become alkaline, if that's what you really want to do, is just breathe. You can't really force your pH one way or the other. That's, again, it's the a big myth. The body adjusts itself. Exactly, the body's always gonna adjust. So you're this, just making the body work harder. And this is something people don't understand. This is really important. You think you can make your pH go up or down, your body's automatically got its self-leveling systems built in. You can't really mess with your body that much, right? Right. Both acidosis and alkalosis are both extremely, extremely rare conditions because the body has so many different redundant systems to maintain its pH. What's interesting though is alkalinity is actually more dangerous than acidity because the body has less to deal with alkalinity than it does acidity and either alkalinity or acidity can kill you. Right. So alkalinity is actually considered more of a dangerous condition than acidity. But again, both of them are extremely rare. You might see it in, if you drink antifreeze, you'll end up with acidosis. If you've got COPD because of the hypoventilation, you might end up with a little bit of acidosis. Or you might go into diabetic ketoacidosis. But those are some of the few rare cases that we actually see cases of acidosis. Alkalosis is more when people overdoing alkaline stuff for one. Um, taking antacids with milk can cause milk alkali syndrome, which is extremely dangerous. So there are some conditions too where alkalosis presents as a major danger to the health. So what's this thing with milk again? It's called milk alkali syndrome. Uh, basically it's when people, uh, well there's other reasons that it depends on you know what books you read on it, whatever, but generally it's considered when people take antacids and milk together mm -hmm. that it can actually over alkalize the blood and you get what's called milk alkali syndrome. And it's, it can be quite dangerous. Really? <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot of reasons we need our stomach acid. And when you take anything alkaline, whether it be alkaline waters or baking soda, anything like that, you're actually gonna wipe out your stomach acid. It's like, how many people would sit there in the alternative field, I should say, our holistic field, and we're gonna sit there and say, go take Tums. They say, oh no, that's like a pharmaceutical drug and whatever, it's bad for you because you're, you know, you're gonna wipe out your stomach acid. What's the difference? Yeah. If you're taking baking soda or taking alkaline water, you're doing the same exact thing to right. the body. Right, right. Just baking soda, you're getting a lot more sodium in your system. Is <laughs> the only difference? This is an interesting thing that people, they, this brings up that my thing about testing yourself with pH paper. I think what a lot of people don't realize, they like, they pee or on, on paper and it, it, they, they see that they're, they're alkaline or they're acidic. And I keep trying to tell them that, well, what you're measuring is what the body's getting rid of, yeah. right? So whatever it got rid of, you probably had the opposite inside you. If you got too much acid in your body, gets rid of a lot of acid. So you measure it, it says you have acid, but actually you're actually now more alkaline. So it gets a lot more complicated than that though, because urinary pH and salivary pH don't reflect your blood pH whatsoever. Right. That is one of the biggest myths out there. Uh, something as simple as thinking about a certain food will change your salivary pH. Because it adjusts for what exactly like, yeah. whatever it's going to yeah. be digesting. So I mean, th think about it. your mouth is one of the filthiest parts of the human body, uh -huh. right? And it, it's it's alkaline. The reason the mouth's not alkaline is otherwise the acid would eat away your teeth. Which brings up a really good point because we have bacteria that produce acids in our mouth, but the saliva helps to neutralize those acids. Right. But if you take your pH and let's say it shows up acid, it could just be simply because you didn't brush your teeth, so you got all these acid forming bacteria. Now you brush your teeth, the pH is going to go up right. because you got rid of the acid forming bacteria. Right. <laughs> so that's one right. thing that people have to keep in mind. Well really the, the parts of your body that are exposed to the outside world, your skin, right. your sinuses, your digestive tract, vagina, everything like that has to be acidic. Otherwise right. you would literally die when you have sex or you just have bacteria landing on your skin. You'd be eaten alive. Right. Yeah, those acids help to protect your body from the pathogens. Like they found that in hospital settings when the people used to wash their hands all the time, that the hospital infections actually went up because the alkalinity of the skin right. was causing the skin to crack right. and then it would allow that then the cracks you would form more bacteria. Soap is alkaline, right? Exactly. It's lye. It's, it's alkaline. Yeah. And so they have it back. So the best thing you can wash your skin with is acidic stuff, right? Yeah, or if you do use soap, a tr simple trick you can do is make a citric acid spray. Just You can buy a citric acid, like $2 a pound, and just make a weak solution of citric acid. And you, after you shower and whatever, you just spray your body. Yeah. You can spray your hair, because your hair is actually supposed to be slightly acidic too. So it helps keep the hair from drying out and becoming brittle. So, so is this a cause why people are losing hair and getting dry hair? Um, there's actually a lot of reasons for that. Shampoo is definitely one big factor though. 
But also, dry hair can be a sign of hypothyroidism. Right. Hair. But I mean, can acids help your hair? Yeah, it actually benefits the hair. It makes it healthier so that it's not dry and, you know, breaking it, not coming out from the roots, but, you know, breaking yeah. and stuff because it becomes too alkaline, it can damage the hair just like it does the skin. What about apple cider vinegar? Can you, like, wash it all over you? And yeah, if you like the smell. But <laughs> so the nice thing about citric acid is that it doesn't leave any type of lingering smell. Yeah. And so if you're in a rush or whatever, you know, you can spray it and whatever. Right. I'd give you another uh, really good little tip. Um, if you want the best deodorant in the world that's safe, just get some lime juice and use it for deodorant. Interesting. Yeah, it neutralizes the ammonia for one and the acid kills off the bacteria. I found it works much better than any commercial product I've found so far. Mm. It's not an antiperspirant, it's only a deodorant. <laughs> yeah. And another interesting thing about the, the, uh, the alkaline promotes growth and mm -hmm. acid kills it. Um, I mean, the, the, like for example, a female vagina, it's normally acidic, right? You wash it out with acids, and when male ejaculate is alkaline, right. so the sperm can survive. Well, what does that tell you, right? I mean, little tiny creepy crawly things like to live in an alkaline environment. Acid kills it. Exactly. it it's, it's, it's so, I mean, this is self-explanatory stuff. It's, it's common sense. And the one thing I learned about, you know, I know a lot of the alkaline people are going to come after us and say, oh, but there's scientific proof. Proof. There's books written about this. The one thing I learned about court cases is you're always going to find proof to validate whatever you believe in. No matter what side you're on, you're going to find proof. And there's, there's scientists out there who are going to swear up and down with all their test results that alkaline is the way to go. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost not even believing science anymore. I'm almost starting to believe in common sense. And it's like you're at your stomach ass. Think about it. In nature, when you, in the wild, the way every other living thing is, you eat a carrot out of the ground, it's got all kinds of bacteria and stuff on it. You eat it, you get the bacteria in you, first thing that it hits is your stomach acid, which kills everything, neutralizes it. It's stomach acid doesn't just break down your food, it's like your protective barrier, right? Exactly. And nowadays, uh, people's stomach acid is really low because of stress, because of the food that they're eating and whatever, so now the pathogens are getting through. And I think another great ex uh, proof of, of that is H. pylori, right? Exactly. It digs in your stomach wall and it creates ammonia, which is highly alkaline. Now, why, does, why would a bacteria create ammonia? which is highly, highly alkaline. It's so alkaline that you could burn yourself and alkaline burn it. Why would something create that? Because it wants to live in an alkaline environment. So it can party in there. You're pouring food down there all the time. You're feet giving it like free food. So I mean, it's common sense. Exactly. Yeah, well, as we mentioned earlier too, we were talking about how the, the body adjusts its pH. And you were talking about how the bones uh, can be demineralized. Yeah. That's only as a very last resort. The body has redundant systems in order to maintain its pH. Ph, respiration is your primary means of pH Alkalizing, balance. Yeah. Yeah, if you become too acidic, yeah. respiration increases, and that way it blows off CO2, reduces carbonic acid levels. So if you're too alkaline, you know, your body's going to slow down its respiration to build up CO2. So that's your primary means of pH regulation. And other means include excretion of hydrogen ions through the kidneys, protein binding, uh, pancreatic bicarbonate release, which that actually that brings up a real interesting point too that I love to bring up to people because everyone talks about how if you drink lemon juice it's alkalizing and nobody stops to think about why it's alkalizing because it's technically it's an acid right. but it has an alkalizing effect and in coffee in, anything you ingest has an alkalizing effect under the same principle because what's going on is when you ingest the acid the stomach has to reach a certain acidity before it'll empty out. Once it reaches that particular acidity, it empties out into the intestine. The first thing that happens, the pancreas releases bicarbonate, which is your, your uh, alkaline response, to neutralize the acid so the acid won't damage the intestines. Mm. And so it doesn't matter if you eat a steak or you drink lemon juice or carrot or whatever, you're going to form an alkaline response. <laughs> yeah, well that's what a lot of people are emailing and they're saying, well are you telling me that I shouldn't have an alkaline food because all raw food and all that green stuff, it's good for you because it's alkaline. I mean, they're, they're, they're thinking drinking alkaline water is the same as eating celery and, and, and spinach because wow. that's alkaline food, right? Yeah, that's way different because when you're talking about the difference between chelated minerals, which can act as a buffer for acids, and you're talking about hydroxides, which are caustic. There's a big difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. When you're talking about the alkaline waters, they, they say you have to use mineralized water. Well, the reason they do that is when they're split in the water, you basically got your H and your OH. So your H forms your acid, your OH forms your hydroxide. But these hydroxide uh, 
bind with the minerals, so you form mineral hydroxide. You got calcium hydroxide, you got magnesium hydroxide. So all these hydroxides, though, are very, very damaging to the body. First of all, they neutralize stomach acid. And when you neutralize stomach acid, they say, oh, you just form more. No, that's not true. What happens is that the nutrients required to form stomach acid, which include B6, B12, folate, all require acids to be absorbed because it's part of the methylation process. So in order to absorb the nutrients for that methylation process from stomach acid, you have to have sufficient stomach acid in the first place. So when you keep neutralizing your stomach acid, you're actually impeding the body's ability to generate its own stomach acid in the long run. Right. So that the whole myth, you know, when well, I said, oh, it's a myth. You're right, right. Oh. And add to that, you know, stomach acid being weakened because of the modern lifestyle, because of stress and, and everything else. Even aging, because yeah. methylation decreases with aging, so we lose right. stomach acidity. But then people are taking, they get heartburn, which is a lack of stomach acid leading to fermentation in the stomach. The gas builds up, which pressure on the lower, sphincter, uh, lower esophageal sphincter. When that valve tires out, it gives way. Gas it raises up the esophagus, carrying traces of acid with it. That's your heartburn. So first thing they do, antacids, right, acid right. blocker. But they think they have too much acid in their system, so they take antacids. And, and it compounds the problem. And a lot of times it's the opposite. They don't have enough acid. And whatever weak acid they have is making it up the esophagus because yeah. they're their, their valve is too weak to stay shut. It's just traces of acid. If you had too much stomach acid coming, which is called hyperchloridia, but if you check the medical text, it's almost unheard of. It is so rare. Yeah. But if you had too much stomach acid coming to the esophagus, you would immediately erode away the esophagus. You would die from internal bleeding as you ruptured the blood vessels in the esophagus. Yeah. It's not that common. <laughs> A lot of people are are um, saying like, well, what about all this, these, these people that are like healing themselves of cancer when they, by downing lots of uh, baking soda. No, it doesn't cure cancer at all. Um, baking soda, that's, uh, Simoncini is the one that's really promoting that, but He's, what people got to realize is that Simoncini was directly injecting the baking soda into the tumor, not ingesting it. If you ingest baking soda, first thing it's going to hit is your stomach acid. You're not going to be baking soda. It. Yeah, it's not going to be baking soda anymore. Right. So you're not getting that alkalizing effect unless you just you overwhelm your stomach acid, which is a bad idea in the first place. Right. Plus, you know, if you think about cancer patients, need the stomach acid for nutrient absorption. For instance, you can't break down your proteins without sufficient stomach acid. Right. You wipe out your stomach acid, you're actually going to more nutritional deficiencies, which is what most cancer patients die from in the first place. Exactly. And that's, you know, this is the most common thing that, you, forget all the scientific proof, this is common sense. You have something alkaline, you put it into acid, your stomach acid, now you don't have stomach acid anymore. It's neutralized. So how can you digest your food? How can you get nutrition into your body? This is like common sense. Forget all the, you know, these people are going to have their proof, these people are going to have their proof, but I mean, doesn't that make sense to you guys? Doesn't, I mean, no more stomach acid, no more food into your body, no more energy. Yeah, so you getting back to Simoncini, like I said, he injected the baking soda directly into the tumors. What that's gonna do is it will kill the cancer cells, but it's through an osmotic shift. It's not from alkalizing. Basically, what you're gonna do is you, well, to understand osmotic shift, basically it means that water's gonna travel from a higher level of uh, high purity to a lower purity. So if you take a saltwater fish and you put it into fresh water, the fresh water goes into the cells trying to dilute the salt in the cells, it actually swells the cells and those cells will rupture. Now if you go the opposite and you take a freshwater fish, you put it into salt water, since there's a higher concentration of fresh water inside the cells of the freshwater fish, it moves outward into the salt and the fish actually dehydrates. That's the osmotic shift. So what Simon Sinning was doing was he's creating such a high level of salt inside there that it was killing the cancer cells through an osmotic shift. But again, you can't do that by ingesting baking soda. So what about these people that are saying they claim that taking all this alkaline water and they get better and they, they feel better and their diseases are going away? I mean, I'm, before you answer that, real quick, my, my answer, I think, is that anybody who, the minute somebody says, you have cancer, you're not just going to do one thing. You're going to do a lot of things. You're going to eat right. You're going to do you do everything, right? And and alkaline water is maybe just one of those things you're going to be doing. And maybe that'll knock you back a little bit. But all these other things you're doing will probably make you better. So you pro so if you're into alkaline water, you might say, oh, the alkaline water is getting me better. Well, maybe it's your better eating. Maybe it's your better lifestyle. Maybe it's like everything else. 
other than that, yeah, the herbs you start taking, the ozone therapy you're using, yeah, exactly. stuff like, yeah, the, the people are always going to do more than one thing. You don't sit there and attack cancer through a single means. Right, right. So you're going to make multiple changes and you're going to attack it from multiple means. Yeah. So that is a big factor right there. And then there's also the placebo effect. Especially these people that spend four thousand dollars on a machine. The last thing they want to do is, is go, oh my God, I was, you know, that they did the, that they wasted money, did the wrong, and that they told all their friends about the magic of alkaline water and that you know now they feel like fools exactly. so so they don't want to be like a fool so, that, so they're gonna fight to the death that this is the way to go and it, nobody wants to look bad to anybody else yeah they want to feel like they're duped you know yeah. I, and I'm one of them I got duped myself six years ago I wrote about it in my book so any of you who who have that old version update update we human we learn we grow and that's the only thing I ever regret telling people is the alkaline thing um, and it totally makes sense thank you for James I mean we have to learn and and expand well if we get back to the uh, alkaline waters too one of the things that people need to realize is that, again these are hydroxides and now look up what these hydroxides really are like um, okay magnesium hydroxide is one of the things you'll form because oh, I was saying about you have to use the mineralized water in order to form those hydroxides so let's say you got magnesium in your water, you're going to form magnesium hydroxide. What's magnesium hydroxide commercially? It's milk and magnesia. What is it used for? It's a laxative. Now, why is it a laxative? Because milk and magnesia burns the intestinal wall and so causes an influx of fluid into the intestine that stimulates peristalsis from chemically burning the intestinal wall. That's not good for the intestines. You know, if you have your gallbladder removed, same principle, the bile burns your intestinal wall from dumping in your intestines, you get chronic diarrhea and it actually increases your risk of cancer. Now, if you look at calcium in the water, now you got calcium hydroxide. What is it used for commercially? It's industrial lime used to make cement. What does it say on the bag? Do not get on your skin or in your yeah, tissues right. because it will burn your tissues. Yeah. Hydroxides are caustic. If you look at Drano, Drano is potassium hydroxide. You can drink it because it will burn your esophagus and you will die. Right. Same thing, sodium hydroxide is the red devil lie. It will burn your tissues. All hydroxides are caustic. Yeah. And that's what they're telling people to ingest are these caustic fluids. On the other hand, uh, some people are going to ask, well, can I drink the acid water coming out of the machine? Oh. Technically, you could but you're risking your teeth at this point. Yeah. Personally, if, if you really want to drink water, the best thing in the world you can drink is spring water. Right. It's got the minerals and this whole thing about inorganic minerals not being absorbed is again, it's another myth. And a simple way to understand that is how many people take sea salt? Sea salt's an inorganic mineral. It's absorbed. <laughs> We utilize it. Right, right. So yes, we do exactly. absorb and utilize these inorganic minerals. But again, you know, somewhere along the line somebody decided that, oh no, we can't use them because they're rock and so therefore you can't, you know, drink spring water to get minerals. Well what did we do before all these machines and all this stuff came out? We drank river water, we right. drank spring water, and we had healthy bones, we had healthy tissues because we absorbed and utilized those minerals. If, if you think about it, I mean if you're really into uh, alkaline water what is hard water? It's yeah. calcium and minerals that are alkaline, right? It's that exactly. white stuff that, that... Yeah, calcium, magnesium, carbonates. So, so what's the answer to that? Is that bad for you because it's got alkaline minerals in it? It is to an extent. It uh, depends on what form the minerals are in. In our, our water out here, of course, we got so much caliche in our soil that we have a lot of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. And yes, the carbonates will neutralize your stomach acid in the same manner. But a lot of the spring waters and stuff, you know, they pick up uh, plant acids and stuff from humic acids and whatever. And so it balances out a little bit, forms more absorbable salts compared to what, like, I wouldn't drink our water here. Yeah. <laughs> acids, we are made of acids. We're, we're amino acids. That's what protein is made of. How many of your vitamins are acids? Panathetic acid, ascorbic acid, right. and so on. Folic acid. I mean, we're, our acids are beneficial to the body. We need them to survive. Our bodies produce lactic acid by the intestinal flora. I shouldn't say our bodies, our flora. The only part of the body that ever generates lactic acid is the flora, but our own cells do not produce lactic acid nowhere in the human well, body. They say when you work out you get lactic no. acid and stuff. That's like a big myth. Okay. Yeah, you produce lactate. The burning that you experience during the actual exercise is actually from the hydrogen protons again. That builds up and that's what actually ends up creating the burning sensation. Now the muscle soreness you get afterwards, that's not from the acid whatsoever. That's another myth. That's from micro tears in the muscles. The hydrogen protons are actually removed from again from respiration. That's why when you're running your respiration increases because you have to you know more oxygen demand to the muscles and so on but when you stop running you don't stop 
breathing all of a sudden, you're still, you know, like this, you're breathing heavy because your body's trying to pump off those extra hydrogen ions. But once those levels drop back down, respiration decreases back down again because there's no need for that extra oxygen to remove the hydrogen ions. Also, there's like uric acid. Yeah, uric acid is a byproduct of basically protein metabolism, also breakdown of old cells inside the body. The body will generate uric acid. Now again, uric acid has its benefits in the body. For one thing, it's the body's primary antioxidant. But too much of it, of course, well, too much of anything can be right. bad. Too much water will kill you, too much oxygen right. will kill you. So it's one of those things where you have to have that balance. But we need uric acid as an antioxidant for the body. And then uric acid has its other purposes too. But yeah, you know, it's one of the primary reasons. Yeah, there's so many healing acids. There's fulvic the acid. Fulvic acid. Betalinic acid is the most strong antiviral, uh, anti-cancer agent you can find. It's found in shaga mushrooms. Um, there, in fact, there's a lot of acids and stuff that are known to kill cancer cells. Right. And again, your vitamins and so on, they're all acids. Those of you who have a machine, what I was, how I started this was uh, actually the part that you want is the acid water, either coming out the back end or dialing your own acid water. It's actually, from what I hear, the best um, way of washing your hands, of cleaning your dishes, of disinfecting your countertops, of doing your laundry, putting it in your laundry, right? Yeah, exactly. It's great for cleaning, disinfecting. Yeah, it'll soften the water. Anything, soften the water, anything that's on the outside of you, you know, washing your skin, um, it's a great cleansing device. Throw away the chemicals that you use to clean your, your stuff with. Use the acid. It's really good. It has its purpose. Um, but the alkaline side of it, that's the way everybody's got it backwards. Yeah, I mean, if you want to drink the alkaline water, just add some lemon juice or something so that you form, again, salts that aren't caustic. You'll yeah. form citrates and malates that way. Yeah, so uh, thanks, James. This is uh, We really needed to clear this up. Is there a way to see people getting a hold of you if they have any questions or anything? Uh, MedCapsules.com com is basically it's a um, medical information site so it covers both allopathic and holistic so if people want to go one way or the other right. here's the information that you know covers different diseases and right. um, I'm kind of busy right now so I haven't spent a whole lot of time on it lately but um, yeah. There's some archived messages on there. So that's usually the best way to check that first because you probably find the answers to your questions all the Yeah, I've been on that site. You I mean you name any category you ever want to think of in the health world, just put in a keyword. He's already answered it. I mean, he's, he's spent half a lifetime answering mm -hmm. stuff. So he's one of the best sources. I really admire him. I look up to his research. He's, uh, and he's been on both sides, he's been in the medical field. Seen, he's seen what they do in, in, in the, uh, the emergency rooms, the operating rooms. Yeah, that's why I don't go to doctors. <laughs> I haven't been to a doctor. I was uh, 16 last time I went to a doctor. Yeah. And the doctor pissed me off so bad because he was a moron. <laughs> put it that way. And um, I've just seen, especially here, you know, our doctors here are really bad. And I've seen them kill too many people that I know. My grandfather, they, they killed him. It's stupid mistakes. Real, they did multiple ones, but the one that really killed him was they'd give him heparin therapy three times in four months. You can't do that. It creates blood clots when you do that. Even though it's a blood thinner, it causes white thrombus syndrome, and that caused him to stroke, and he died. Uh, my business partner's dad just died from iodine overdose from the doctor giving him amiodarone. And we spent four months getting him off the drug the first time. When he went back in the hospital for unrelated condition, the doctor put him back on the amiodarone. It doubled the dosage and killed him. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I don't go to doctors. Yeah. yeah, so all this scientific quote unquote proof they have that alkaline is the way to go. I, I, it's, that's still somebody's opinion. I mean, scientists said 500 years ago the world was flat, right? Yeah. They had all the proof in the world that it was. So I, I, I don't believe half the stuff out there that people say anyway, even if it's in a book. Somebody wrote, a doctor, a PhD wrote a book. Well, so what, you know? Yeah, a lot of the stuff, one of the problems we run into is research is so easy to manipulate. If you want to prove something, there are ways to set up the research to where it proves what you're trying right, to prove. Exactly. Like, right. uh, they have studies that sit there and say echinacea is the most wonderful stuff in the world, and there's stuff that's, you know, studies that sit there and say that it's totally worthless. Right. Read the studies. The ones that show that it worked great are the ones that properly dosed the person. There's one study that I saw 
saw that said it, it had no effect on the cold, they're giving the person one capsule of regular herb per day. And it's like, gee, why didn't, didn't it work? We didn't want it to work. <laughs> so there are ways to manipulate research. And that's why you have to really go in and you gotta read the actual study yeah. and find out how was it designed, how was it interpreted, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And that will answer a lot more questions. Well, thanks, James. It's a pleasure having you here. And I'm, if you're up for it, let's do some more in the future. Okay. Because there's you're really great at answering questions with scientific proof and uh, ways that people can research and Google and stuff. Um, I'm here to jumpstart you guys, and then some of the stuff which is really important, you need proof. So he's a good way to, to give you that. Before we go, can I mention one other thing? Because I yeah. I wanted to bring up to people just so people understand how Kingan is really manipulating things. I already mentioned like the videos and stuff, but on their website they used to talk about how they had the certificate of uh, approval from the Japanese Ministry of Health. And I went on there one time, I looked it up, and it was just like really, really tiny to make sure you couldn't read it. So I did is I copied it, I took it over to Word, and I enlarged it so I could actually read it. It had nothing to do with the Japanese Ministry of Health whatsoever. All it was was a certificate allowing them to manufacture the machines. <laughs> so it's a good example of how they're, they're lying through their teeth to try to sell these overpriced machines. Yeah. And so it's something that people need to understand that, you know, it is an MLM company. MLM companies tend to lie because they have to justify their higher prices. This is important, and anytime I get an update, even if it was something I said years ago, and I, it, it's you know, it's changed. I'll give you. I want to give you the latest. I want to give you something that's important, that especially if your life depends on it. Stay tuned. Keep looking at MarcusNews.com for the latest, and I'll give you the link at this to reach um, James and his site. So between us, uh, hopefully we can save some more lives and, and keep people from spending unnecessary money and. Uh, going through a lot of pain. Thanks guys, thanks James. Thank you. Next time, bye.